Good day and welcome back to my channel Silver Flyer. In our last video, uh, my first video, we did an unboxing of about 490 ounces of silver, 7 ounces of gold. It was a lot of fun and I did have some requests to do some follow-up videos. I do have some ideas for future videos also that I'd like to kind of introduce here while I'm at it. This video today is basically an update of uh, um, where I'm at with my stack, uh, starting with uh, where I started out with just some basic coins and um, my first stack purchases and my most recent stack purchases adding up to what I what you see here uh, about 1202 ounces maybe a little bit more um, of silver and about eight ounces of gold eight and a half maybe eight eight ounces and about seven grams of gold also, you see here some of my ideas for uh, future videos. Uh, over here I have uh, the scales, micrometers, uh, silver testing kit, um, also the rare earth magnets, some stacking, um, packaging, and storage supplies, which I'd like to cover in a future video. Also, for the naysayers in my last video, uh, I did uh, go out and find myself some white gloves here, some cotton gloves. So, uh, thanks for your feedback. I do appreciate all your messages, uh, all your feedback, ideas, and uh, comments. So, if you do enjoy the video, please like or subscribe and uh, leave me a comment. Uh, today, we're going to start with uh, where I started out. Now, I, was, I don't really consider this part of my stack here. You see an example of some of the coins I've collected. These ones here are silver examples. There are others that are not. They're just... Uh, Canadian proof coins that were passed on to me by my grandfather as well as some collectible stuff that I had before I started actually stacking. Then I started, uh, I moved into actual stacking I suppose without really knowing what I was doing at the beginning. I went to my bank, made a purchase, uh, asked, you know, I want some silver, I want some gold, made the order and as you see here, we'll cover this in a moment here, what I bought to start out. Probably not the best way to start, but again, you've got to start somewhere and you have to learn. It's a learning process and that's what I kind of like to share with you in my videos. Uh, also here, I kind of have a segue or introduction into some future video ideas. As I mentioned, um, uh, silver testing and uh, confirming uh, basically size and density through measurement and weight of a particular coin or bar, which you can find on the internet, that specific information. And we'll get into possibly also um, specific gravity testing or density testing, which uh, uses the water and uh, weight trick in some mathematics. Get into that later on. Uh, also, I have one, uh, another idea I'd like to introduce, just for a fun video, maybe I'd like to do, is the uh, covering the 45 caliber silver bullet as compared to the actual thing and here for that video probably we have another prop here so uh, again welcome to the channel and uh, let's move on into the rest of the video all right getting into where I started where I started was uh, probably before three months ago uh, all I had was is what you see from about here up uh, some uh, coins uh, that were inherited from my grandfather, uh, some 100% silver, some 92%, and uh, some 50% silver. I wouldn't consider this part of my stack. This has sentimental value, and I'd probably never sell it. What I would include was some of the stuff that came along with that collection were some junk silver coins. Canadian junk silver, 80%. There's a bit of silver value there, and. I don't really consider it part of his collection. It was more or less some extras he had in, in, in the box with the other stuff. Some of the interesting stuff I did get into were uh, the Egyptian, which I bought on my own, and we have here Greek, about 2,400 years old, and uh, two Roman coins, which I might cover in some future video. That type of stuff does interest me. It's all numismatic. You're looking at probably only about mm, eight, nine grams of silver there in total. Maybe, maybe a little bit more, I'm not sure. So about three months ago, I walked into my bank and I, I was thinking about getting into precious metals. 
and uh, without really knowing what I was doing, but knowing what I wanted, uh, I ordered some silver. So about 260 ounces of silver and one ounce of gold is where my stack started a little over three months ago. And uh, what you see here is the 100 ounce uh, Canadian Mint bars, a 10 ounce Canadian Mint bar, which I bought at a separate uh, location, not at the bank. And then the Toronto Dominion or TD type silver bars. Bullion is bullion to me. I don't really care as long as uh, it's a recognizable uh, mint, which TD Bank is really well known in Canada, and that it's uh, pure silver. And uh, lastly, the one ounce of uh, fine gold there, also by Toronto Dominion. And uh, from there, I started to do a lot more research, uh, watching a lot of uh, YouTube videos, a lot of good uh, channels out there on Silver stacking. I also spent a lot of time on the internet doing research on different uh, places to buy what was best, what would have, say, free shipping, um, bulk deals, and that's what I'll get into here once we get into that. So I started out with 200 and about a little more than 260 ounces of silver, maybe 270 if you include some of the scrap uh, or, sorry, uh, junk silver. Okay, where I'm at now. In the past three weeks, what I acquired was from about this line over, everything here, and uh, that amounts to approximately 933 ounces of silver and seven ounces of gold, with another maybe seven and a half grams here. We did cover in the first video uh, an unboxing of 490 ounces of uh, silver, seven ounces of gold, which you'll see the monster box still sealed up here and uh, seven ounces of gold in five ounces and quarter ounce pieces, two one ounce pieces of gold, and uh, the, there was two in that unboxing, uh, 10 ounce silver coins, one from the UK, this one seen here, which is the Queen's Beast, and the other one was the Australian Kookaburra, which I did sell to my brother-in-law. Uh, additionally to that, uh, what I've collected in local coin shops and um, also other online dealers is what you see here. So getting into it, uh, what I consider some semi-numismatic, which are the pandas, only a handful of those, the Philharmonics from Austria, which I'm not even sure I consider them mostly bullion and the definitely bullion coins, just like the Maple Leafs for me are the uh, American Eagles, the Silver Eagle. You have some bullion, um, some larger bars and uh, 100, 100 ounce Engelhart, which uh, I came across in a, basically a, a silver dealer nearby. Some Monarch medals, bullion bars, uh, some numismatic examples, uh, stuff that interests me sometimes. And I, I really like to stick to stacking and stacking, collecting, Numismatic slash semi-numismatic are completely different things. Apples and oranges, basically. But it does still interest me. So what I have here is the Victory, uh, 2005 uh, 60 anniversary Victory silver coin. Uh, that's a pure silver coin at about one ounce. Then you have the uh, Sopwith Camel commemorative 2016, which is one of the aircraft we used during the First World War, which interests me. And you also have uh, the uh, Special Service Force, which was a unit created during World War II, and I'm not sure if you all know about it, but it was uh, part Canadian, part American, based in Georgia, I believe. And 60% uh, American uh, soldiers, 40% Canadian, and they were a Special Forces or Commando unit that served during the war. The Apollo mission, 50th anniversary, uh, that is um, the... PF-70 Ultra Cameo, and again, space, air, stuff that interests me, a couple of Nikola Tesla silver coins, actually. And I can't remember the Serbia, um, Serbian currency, which is the, where is it here? Denara. So one uh, commemorates his uh, invention of AC Electric, which obviously changed the world, brilliant man, and his uh, start at remote control. So those are two commemorative coins. Uh, moving down here, I've picked up a couple more, including one graded NGC 
uh, Roman coin. And that's from uh, just uh, shortly after uh, AD, so uh, 81 to 96 AD. And this one here was uh, Marcus Aurelius, uh, who died in one, uh, 180 AD. Down here, uh, some rounds, basically stuff that interests me. Uh, Silver Shield, I think uh, great products. Uh, not all of their stuff attracts me, but some of it's really beautiful. Uh, artwork or themes that they do, some political stuff. But what mostly interests me is the artwork. Uh, some pretty girls here. This is the Temperance coin of 2018. It's numbered at only minted 765, that's number 471. And uh, down here, a um, couple other coins that I picked up uh, from Silver Shield. And getting up not too far off a of spot value, I'm going to see how they do. I'm not interested yet at adding them into the so-called so stack yet, but it's more or less an interest in dabbling in numismatics. And of course, you'll see a couple Trump coins. I don't care what you think of him. I think his presidency will be well known for many years. Maybe those things will become collectible. I don't know. I did pick up some junk silver. Now I prefer actually US junk silver. It's probably, uh, well, 90% silver. It's also well known in the stacking, collecting, and uh, I think in general society too, how much silver is in the 64, or sorry, pre-1965 coins. I picked up $100, ounce, uh, $100 face value and half dollars and a couple of uh, quarter dollars. Uh, all 90% silver, so you're looking at roughly here is uh, 71.5 ounces of actual silver in this. And I picked that up for about $1,200 US, which uh, is a little bit on top of the premium, but I, I still think a pretty good deal. Uh, the best deal here of all was the um, quarters. These are Canadian quarters, 80% uh, silver, $10 face value which equals uh, six ounces of silver. I picked this up for $100 Canadian in a local coin shop, which is probably about $75 American under spot. Best deal probably you see on this table here. Although normally everything I buy, I try to buy in bulk. I don't go buy one panda out of a coin shop, I'll buy five and I'll add that to say five Philharmonics. Then I'll buy a couple numismatics from him. And once I get the pile on the table, I'll ask him, hey, can you do me a deal on this stuff here? I would like to get all this stuff together. And uh, he was really good, a lot of fun to work with. Um, I bought the gold proof uh, panda. That's about a three gram coin uh, from him, as well as the two Roman coins. And I can't remember exactly which ones I got from the same guy, but I do remember he had the pandas and the philharmonics. I put them all together and he knocked a few bucks off the Roman coins, tiny little bit off the gold, and his prices were already pretty reasonable on the pandas, but as a volume deal, he was willing to knock some money off the other stuff. Um, also acquired here recently, and I went to what they call a head shop, which is, sells marijuana smoking supplies, but it was the best place in the area to actually find a good accurate scale. This does up to 2,600 grams, and down to 0.1 of a gram, it also does troy ounces, which is also pretty handy in uh, our business. Uh, I ordered on the internet a silver testing kit, and uh, we'll get into that later on, the rare earth magnets. And out of the local coin shops and whatnot, uh, I did, and a couple online, I did pick up some storage supplies and some packaging materials. For, for me, for the semi-numismatic, uh, or above, I think it's essential to make sure that you've protected uh, your coins. And you'll notice any of the numismatic or semi-numismatics I have here are protected. Now you look at bullion coins, uh, the eagles, uh, I got a couple of buffaloes here, and an Engelhart round, and what's this one here, national commercial uh, round as well. And then you have your bullion bars here. Personally, I don't see the point in spending one extra dollar on packaging something that will only ever be silver and will only be ever silver bullion. Yeah, they ding each other up a little bit. They might discolor like this Engelhart round or this Engelhart bar, but essentially that's just silver and it will never really change. You'll never get a collector's value on that or a numismatic value on that. It will only be what it is right now. 
Uh, the gold's a little more expensive. That will only ever be bullion as well, but it's gold and being, you know, I don't know, a few hundred bucks per coin, why not keep it protected? And if it, for me, the general rule is if it comes in a container capsule package, I keep it in the same uh, packet material. I won't remove it. However, what I will spend money on um, putting, uh, protecting is um, uh, stuff that's numismatic, semi-numismatics may gain value and I want to keep the, the color nice. I don't want it to discolor too much. I don't want it to get dinged up. So uh, what I have done, and these generally are really, really cheap here. So for um, the junk silver, I did receive most of it outside of these containers. And this, this $100 face value came in a big, basically a Ziploc bag. And um, it doesn't really stack very nicely into the safe. Once you start stuffing all of this stuff into your safe, it's a little disorganized. So what I did as I went to my local coin shop, he had some of these while buying some other stuff. Uh, I think it was maybe a couple of the coins here and uh, like numismatic coins and a couple of the junk silver coins. I asked him, they said, hey, do you have any of these containers? I need a few. And he ended up giving me most of them actually, which is rather nice of him. I have a label maker. So what I did is I print the basic information on it. US 50%, 90% silver, $10 face, and how many ounces is in that. So it's readily available, identifiable, um, and it stacks really nicely and neatly into the safe which is also important when you're trying to organize into a small safe, which I may have to buy another safe coming up soon. But right now, everything I have fits. All right, just to end off the video, I didn't want today's video to go too much longer than it has. So I'll try and make this quick here. Some of the featured coins and uh, bullion. Uh, start with the gold here. And then we already covered the quarter ounce and single ounce, one being 1980 and 2015. Interesting thing is in 1980, it was 999. And later on uh, in the eighties, as is seen by the quarter ounce coins and up to 2015, it's quadruple or 9999 pure. The Panda, which is about a three uh, gram coin and uh, NGC certified. As you see there, MS70, sealed, and I got that for a pretty good deal. Probably about, uh, I don't remember, so I don't want to say, actually. Um, aviation coin there, it's about uh, 125th of an ounce, so probably about an ounce, or one and a gram, one and a quarter grams of uh, gold coin, Canada, and commemorative of uh, aviation in Canada. Also, I picked up... Uh, uh, one tenth, which is again about a little over three grams. Moving on here, uh, some of the Roman coins might interest some of the people. Um, starting with the Egyptian coin, I'm not sure what type of metal it is, and I'm going to try to figure that out in the future. Uh, we have a Greek coin and from about a little more than 2300 years old, um, in somewhere in that range, and uh, the three Roman coins and one graded coin. Uh, also uh, NGC graded and uh, you'll notice what I do on my semi numismatic and numismatics is on the packaging somewhere I put the value I picked it up at that way in the future if I do look at selling it I can see whether I'm going up or down in those values without keeping track of each individual coin by memory so basically a record on the coin um, I don't do that for bullion one thing I didn't mention here was this uh, fractional bar, two ounce fractional bar, Canadian mint. Um, personally, uh, not a great deal. You get two ounces and you're going to pay probably at least twice as much as what the silver value is. And really what it is, is it's a bar with uh, some lines stamped into it so you can break it down. So it has uh, uh, basically on the top here, 1 20th ounces, okay? And then you have quarter ounce, and then you have uh, one tenth ounce here, all adding up to two ounce uh, wafer or bar of um, silver. And yeah, again, I wouldn't, I wouldn't touch that. Silver is cheap enough right now. You can probably buy an ounce or more and get uh, closer to spot value. I did buy it from interest, and I don't know, maybe a little careless to spend that way. Getting into some of the numismatics, semi-numismatics. Um, 
First off, uh, one thing that really interests me, again, what I paid for it, and again, this is definitely, a, to me, a numismatic coin. Uh, PF70 Ultra Cameo, uh, commemorating the moon landings. And uh, it is one US dollar, so it is a coin. It's also a curved coin. I don't know if you can see that in the video there, but you can definitely see it on the back, I think. Um, you know what? I probably wouldn't buy too many of these things. I bought one. Basically, not because I'm dabbling in making money on numismatics, because I just, I really liked it, and um, it's uh, aviation and space are two of my big interests, so it kind of spills over into other hobbies, I suppose, but in a coin form. So, I don't know, I'm not really looking at what it's going to sell for in the future. Some of the stuff I am trying here, uh, let me see if we can get a good shot here of the uh, Silver Shield coins which are really, some really beautiful artwork. I find some of their artwork really basic too. Um, they do some political themes that might interest you. And if you buy it, um, I would say right after release, uh, Golden State Mint, I believe it is, uh, that, that sells these directly. You can buy them there for a few dollars over spot. So again, uh, just an example, $19 US is what I paid for this coin which I thought was really nice artwork and not ridiculously expensive over spot so all said and done to me that's still one ounce of silver at worst case scenario maybe the artwork will become worth more uh, I don't know how what the mintage was limited to um, whereas this example here I did buy afterwards so I did pay quite a bit more over spot but not a huge amount um, bought it off eBay be careful buying off of eBay. Uh, I would say go with uh, really uh, well-known dealers, uh, eBay dealers, or people with th uh, thousands and thousands of feedback with 100% positive. Um, other than that, your individual people like off Kijiji or random people off of eBay, I'd probably steer clear of. Um, that uh, off the internet, of course, you can, you know, uh, you can find dealers, the really well-known dealers and big dealers that have to stand on their reputation. eBay, well-known eBay dealers also have to stand on their reputation, but the guy on Kijiji or um, whatever format you want to buy from, who is he? I mean, a guy you meet in the parking lot and buy something? No thanks. Um, let's move a couple of these around here. Uh, just wanted to get into a couple of the last coins here. And... Uh, that was the Sopwith Camel and the Special Service Force. Both really beautiful coins. This one here is actually painted, and it's uh, one gram, or sorry, one ounce of silver. They're pretty, uh, very beautiful. I think uh, limited to 25,000 mint, that's around 17,000 there. Similar mintage on the Special Service coin. I'm, I'd have to check which one or how far along that is in the mintage, but really nice coin. And again, something that interests me. I mean, um, if I'm not paying too much over spot for a semi or a numismatic, semi numismatic, I think it's a no brainer. You still got an ounce. Um, this one here was bought for about $30 US, one ounce of silver. And again, it's a semi numismatic. Maybe it'll go up, maybe it won't. Worst case scenario, I paid twice one ounce cost. And anyway, so thank you for joining me. Uh, I will have some future topics. Um, I do have some other ideas for the future. Uh, bullion slash uh, numismatic, semi-numismatic, and what the differences to me are, where I lean towards is basically bullion. And uh, I also want to do some uh, other interesting videos. If you have any suggestions, you have any feedback, um, any questions, please make a comment. Like, subscribe, and uh, thanks for joining me again. Bye-bye.